beautiful friends and welcome back to my channel. This is Nova Gnome Creations and I'm Nova and I'm so happy to see you today. I hope that you guys had a fantastic weekend. I hope that it felt longer for you guys than it did for us. I swear we didn't have a weekend. It just went by that quickly that I don't think it actually happened. I don't believe it. Um, but we did have fun and I do have pictures uh, to insert for you guys of hanging out with my family. Um, and I will be inserting those in here and giving you guys a an update on the blanket fiasco. So if fiasco doesn't give you a little bit of insight into how that went, um, well... You'll be finding out so real soon. Um, if you are new here, welcome to my channel. I hope that you find this to be the comfiest, coziest little corner of YouTube. And if you are not new here, welcome back my Nomi. I'm so happy that you decided to join us today. Um, I hope everybody is doing well today. I hope that you have something that is going to make you happy to drink. I hope that you get to take a little bit of time for yourself today. I know Mondays can be um, kind of a rough day, a day where we're kind of dragging. Um, and now more than ever is a good time to take five minutes or more if you can to yourself just to sit just to find some peace, to find some calm, to not worry about everything around you, to not worry about anyone else, just to chill, to close your eyes maybe, take a deep breath, drink something yummy, eat something good, you know, take a hot shower, do whatever's going to bring you a little bit of joy. Um, if you did anything fun this weekend, let me know in the comments what you got up to. And as I have been saying every day this month so far, and will continue to remind you guys, this pink hat is for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So I am wearing this uh, hat every day this month, at least for part of my video, even if I have something else going on where I, you know, need to not be wearing it. Um, just to remind you guys to check your boobies and get your mammograms. Uh, and I'm just going to keep it real short and sweet today. Not going to go into a big spiel about it every time, but just your little subtle reminder. Um, so I've got a couple things on the agenda for today. Um, one thing is I want to tell you guys about a spirit week that's coming up um, towards the end of this month. And I want to make sure that you guys are all aware of it. Um, another thing that I have going on is something exciting that I'm planning on doing weekly for uh, the foreseeable future for a little while. And like I said, the blanket update. So let's start with the blanket because I'm sure everybody is wondering what in the world happened uh, with the blanket. Okay, so to start, don't worry, the blanket is still happening, but it is not done. Um, I am excited for the blanket still and I'm going to continue to work on it and it will get done. Um, but it was not as simple as we thought that they were going to be. And maybe we're just, uh, we're just special people and <laughs> it should be simple to other people. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys have done tie blankets before, um, because I know they're really common, but you guys know the blankets where you take the two pieces of fleece and you line them up together and then you do the cuts along the sides and you tie them in knots all up and down the side. And then you have like all up and down the side and the top, you have like the little knotted together pieces of fleece um, and it creates like a blanket, you know? Okay, we've never made these before. My uh, sister, my brother, and my mom and I, we all got on a video chat. We were gonna have like a little Halloween party. We did have a little Halloween party, um, which basically consisted of us um, doing a craft, which was this blanket. And we all synced up our Halloween movies together. Um, and, you know, everybody on their end got together and had, like, like special little Halloween treats and drinks and stuff like that. Um, and Caleb and I were over here and had our own little special food and drinks. Um, and none of us had ever done a fleece blanket before. So, um... I'm going to pop up pictures while I, while I talk about this, so you guys can see like our fun time that we had, um, and our funny goofy pictures. We were playing around with filters towards the end, um, and took some funny pictures. Um, and I'll include those too. But, uh, 
so we all had it in our minds that this was going to be simple. We're like, no sew blankets. Yes, this sounds so easy. Just buy the fleece. They cut it for you. You get it into the specific dimensions that you're going to do. You're just going to put them together and tie them together. And me, I thought, you know, I was going a little bit extra with it, but it still sounded like it was going to be really simple. I was like, okay, I'm not going to do a tie edge blanket. I'm going to do a crochet bordered blanket. So I'm going to have my two pieces of fleece. Same thing though, like already pre-cut to the size. Um, line them up. I bought this fancy rotary cutter um, that I had never used one before. And I was like, okay, so this will be super easy. Bought a special blade for it that makes like little perforated like like little dots basically like cuts holes and you just run it along it like a pizza cutter my husband actually called it a fancy pizza cutter um and I was like okay and then I'll just run it along it make these holes and crochet into the holes and I'm thinking of like a towel topper because I've made some towel toppers you know where you crochet right into the towel and uh I, when I did that, I used like a skinny crochet hook, like a really tiny one, like a two millimeter. And I crocheted my initial like row with that. And then I switched to a bigger hook because the little tiny hook could just poke right through into the, in through the fibers of the washcloth. So I was like, this will be even easier than that because I'm going to have holes to crochet into. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was not as simple as that. It basically from square one, we were having issues. Um, the pieces of fabric were not the same size. One of them came with like the beginning or the end of their like roll of fabric where it has like the copyright information or whatever on it. Um, like the fabric info. So there was like two inches of this like information on the Marauders map fabric, um, but not on the like celestial print fabric. So we had to uh, cut that off. And while doing that, we already like we lined them up and then did that. And then we like sort of shredded a little bit of the edge of the celestial one doing that. Um, cutting with the rotary cutter was not as easy as we thought it would be. It was not as simple as just like pizza cuttering the way down. It was more like, eh, 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 like bat. you had to do it more than one time. Um, maybe that was because we were doing it on the floor. Um, because that was the only space that's big enough to lay out the blanket and do this. Um, so I'm thinking maybe next time that'll be something we have to do differently if I do it again, if I have a next time. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to like go like massively into the whole process because I am going to do a video on this. Like when I finish it, I'm going to do a video on the whole process, what I did. I did take pictures and videos and, uh, I'm going to show you guys and tell you guys all about what I did and also tell you probably what I would do differently next time and stuff. But suffice to say right from then, right from square one, I was having issues with this. Um, when we went to, uh, actually work on them. There's a little bit of a learning curve to this. Okay, so for me, the biggest issue I had was the holes did not line up properly. Like, like I had a hole, like I would have holes right here and then they would like be here suddenly and, and like really far down into the blanket. So I was having to basically make spike stitches, um, spike stitch single crochets. And um, one of my siblings bought the wrong fabric and it was like falling apart. I'm thinking they bought like flannel or something. And then they had to run out and buy batting to put in the middle of their fabric because otherwise it was basically just sheets, um, like two sheets that were being tied together. So they put batting in the middle of it to try to solve that problem. Um, the other one uh, got to the, the side and the fabrics were no longer lining up properly. So she just kind of, you know, fudged her way around and uh, tied them together anyways. And so her blanket is like cupped. Uh, and so, you know, it's not like a square or a rectangle shape. It's kind of like, you know, an exotic shape. <laughs> um, we all just had issues. And like my one sibling that my sister who bought the... Uh, or who uh, made the exotic shaped one. She actually bought enough stuff to make three blankets. 
yeah, she made so she made one yesterday. She's like, uh, these other ones will be happening some other time. And she made like her smallest one. Her other ones are supposed to be like full sized bed blankets. Um, she had also done like a smaller one with a kit because we were like curious about the difference between buying like, you know, your own fabric of the size that you select, um, you know, however many yards or buying they have like fleece throw kits that you can do with the tie blankets where they they're smaller but they come with the two pieces of fabric like already ready for you and everything. But I was like, well, what's the difference? Because if you're buying the fabric and it comes in yards, it's already going to be the right size anyways. Like it's already going to be ready for you. So she used her little kit and I do have a little kit also, but my little kit is Christmas themed. I had to get it because it was gnomes. Um, so I didn't do that one yet. I will be doing that one at some point. Um, so I guess I'll get to experience the, if there's a difference between the two either when I get to it. But yeah, so I was expecting to have a finished blanket to show you guys today. Um, I was expecting to like go right through it and it'd be so easy because I'm just doing a single crochet border all the way around it. I thought that that would be like no time at all, a couple of hours, you know, because it's like a pretty good sized blanket. I got one side done. So I'm going to be working on that and then I am planning on doing like a full video about that. So I just had to update you guys on it though because I did give you a lot of like I was hyped up for it. And I hyped you guys up for it. Um, so yeah, needless to say that did not go <laughs> as planned, but we did have fun and it is coming out in the end. Like I said, I did get one side of it done and, uh, you know, everybody got a blanket to show for it. I mean, mine's not done yet, but, <laughs> uh, you guys are going to have to let me know if you've ever done those fleece, uh, blankets where you tie the, you know, the little, the little slit sides together before. And if you guys had any trouble with it or are we just like really, uh, you know, struggling out here. <laughs> I know that the crocheting into the side, I knew that was going to add like a, a level of difficulty to it. Um, but we all just struggled. <laughs> uh, so that didn't go exactly according to plan. Um, and then, oh yeah. So the new thing that I'm going to be doing once a week, it's going to be on Tuesdays. Um, it is going to be Toadstool Tuesdays. So this is an idea that I have been planning for so long. You guys remember way back at the beginning of the year when I talked about possibly doing Mush May. I was going to do Mushroom May. Um, but around this time I got like really burnt out and was really struggling with depression and stuff. And I ended up needing like a break. Um, and it was just like not the time, you know, it was too much. But I've still really wanted to do the like plans because I had really like thought thought out what I wanted to do for that month. And one of the things I was the most excited to do was Toadstool, Toadstool Tuesdays, um, which is where I'm going to do a tutorial every Tuesday for some kind of mushroom, um, mushroom or mushroom themed thing. And uh, I thought it would be fun because I love creating things that have like a mushroom theme to them. Uh, and this way I could, you know, expand my repertoire of mushroom stuff, um, come up with a new pattern every week give you guys a new tutorial every week um thinking probably for the most part gonna be like small amigurumi um different like shapes of mushrooms um and appliques but I am planning on once we get a little bit further into it doing a granny square and eventually doing a um hat so a lot of you guys have wanted me to do a mushroom granny square hat tutorial and I was like guys I can't because that mushroom granny square that I use is not my own pattern and I keep trying to like I have to say that over and over guys I can't do a tutorial for something that's not my pattern it is a paid pattern that I bought off of Etsy but I know that a lot of you guys here, you want tutorials. Um, some of you don't know how to read patterns or you just don't really like to read patterns. You're, like, you're not comfortable with it. You just prefer tutorial format. And so I understand that like directing you to a paid pattern and saying like, good luck, go for it, you know, doesn't necessarily help um, you if you're here and you're, you know, really into tutorials um, and not patterns. So I have been wanting to design my own and I actually have been working on designing my own that was the thing I mentioned probably last week that I said I was uh like I was working on it and I was thinking it was 
pretty close to being done and, and going well and everything that I was working on a mushroom granny square design. So it will be different, obviously, uh, quite a bit different than the one in the hat because I'm making my own and it's not going to be, um, you know, anything like theirs because that's their pattern. <laughs> but you guys can finally get a mushroom granny square um, hat. So um, that's one of the things that I have planned for them. But like I said, I do plan on doing different amigurumi uh, mushrooms that are like different shapes and sizes, uh, different um, appliques that are different shapes and different sizes. And I just think it'll be fun. And I was like, you know what? It's fall. This is the perfect time to pick that up and do some of those mushroom things that I had been wanting to do. So um, instead of, you know, just doing it like I had originally been thinking I would do it like specifically for an entire month and I would just do only mushroom stuff. But I'm like, actually, I could start, you know, sprinkling it in. I can do my Toadstool Tuesdays. Um, I can do some, you know, different mushy things that I had themed um, and planned out for that. So I'm just going to work them in. Um, and do them now. Uh, so I thought it'd be fun for fall because mushrooms are like associated with fall or autumn. Um, but I don't have like a timeline for it uh, for how long it'll go on for. Basically, um, I think it'll just go on until I feel like I have exhausted my um, need to come up with new mushroom stuff and exhausted you guys of caring about it. <laughs> so probably at least for like I would definitely say the rest of October. Um, so there's four Tuesdays in October. We'll for sure be doing to Toadstool Tuesdays. Um, and then we'll see, maybe we'll continue it into November because November is still, you know, the fall harvesty kind of uh, season, but it's also like pre-gaming for Christmas. So it's like, we'll see, we'll see where the vibe is, you know, right now I'm still feeling it. And right now I'm like, yeah, we'll totally be doing it then. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to touch on for you guys or with you guys is I don't know if you guys, um, follow the Spoonie Stitcher. I mentioned her, uh, quite a few times on my channel and I will link her in the description box below. Um, but she is going to be doing a spirit week coming up towards the end of October. And I wrote down some little notes to share with you guys. And for one, I just have to show you guys, let me go to a fresh page. Is this not the cutest little notepad ever? It says, no body comes between me and my yarn. And it's got some like little like watercolor gnomes on the bottom. Cutest thing ever. I thought that was adorable. That's from Hobby Lobby, by the way. And it does have a magnetic back. So you could put this on your fridge. I just love it. I think it is the cutest thing ever. Um, anyway, let me flip back to the page that I needed. <laughs> um, she's doing a spirit week and it is going to be October 22nd through 29th. So it's going to be the last week of October, um, that Sunday through that Saturday. Uh, and it is called the October Opals, uh, like birthday spirit week. Um, basically the idea behind it was, uh, October is like Opal's birthstone or Opal's birthstone is for October. Um, and her birthday is this month and a couple of other podcasters birthdays are this month. Um, and she thought it would be fun to do a spirit week. That's, that's it. You don't have to be born in October to participate or anything like that. It was basically just the inspiration behind her wanting to do a spirit week was it was her birthday. She wanted to do something fun. Um, and then, like I said, there are some other podcasters who are also, uh, October babies. And so it's like, you know, kind of, oh, let's all come together and do this fun thing. So, um, if you are a podcaster, vlogger, YouTube person, uh, whatever you call yourself, um, you are all welcome to join in and make videos for it. And if you aren't, uh, she said that you can join in and send in pictures uh, to her and she'll include them in her videos. Um, so if you want to partake in a little spirit week, which I love spirit weeks, I literally think they're the most fun thing ever. If you couldn't tell by me like freaking out to get hubby that hat made for Mad Hatter Day on Friday, because um, I was like, yes, random spirit day. I'm here for it. We have to have you prepared. I love doing spirit days. 
Um, I will give you a rundown real quick of what the um, themes are going to be so you can maybe start getting some ideas churning, see if it's something you're interested in doing. And if it is, I will link the video where she goes into description uh, or into details about the whole thing, like everything you need to know about it. But, um, you know, maybe you're over here like, eh, not really interested, but you might hear one of these and be like, never mind, I'm interested. I'm going to definitely join in on this. Um, so her spirit week is actually different than other spirit weeks where you dress up. Uh, it's not just about dressing up. So dressing up is optional, but the most important part of her spirit days and the, like, the part you have to do for her spirit days, like most of them, you have to dress up for it to be like participating. Um, you don't have to dress up for hers, but what you have to do is make something. Uh, so it can be any type of fiber art, anything where you're using like yarn, fiber, you know, like it could be knit, crochet, macrame, um, loom knitting, like anything where you're using fiber, any type of fiber art. Um, and you make something that follows the themes of each day. Um, that is actually the spirit uh, week for her. You can also dress up. Dressing up is super fun and extra, and you should definitely dress up if you want to. Um, but that is not the main thing. The main thing is actually making stuff. So you don't even have to be in the pictures if you want to participate. You can make something, take a picture of your make, and send it to her to participate but not be in the pictures, which I know that will definitely appeal to some people. Some people don't want to get dressed up and, like, take a picture of themselves, and I totally get it. Um, but... I thought that was pretty cool. It's It's got a nice little twist on it that's really nice for um, us crafty folk. So just to give you guys a rundown real quick, um, the first day is going to be starting on a Sunday and it's going to be Snuggly Sunday, which is, as you might guess from the name, basically pajama day. So um, just to give you guys kind of like an idea of what that would mean for making something, um, you could make something snuggly and comfy. Maybe make yourself a pair of slippers. Um, maybe make yourself a nightcap, you know, like a, like one of those little sleeping hats. Um, that's kind of like some examples that I would think of that you could make for that day. Um, and then, of course, you know, you could dress up for pajamas. Um, Tuesday is going to be, or no, Monday is going to be Musical Monday, um, which is going to be... Um, basically just any type of musical that you want to do. So they're, they're pretty open. Uh, so any type of musical you want to do. And even if you're not into musicals, she said, just uh, think of some things that you're interested in and search it because chances are there's a musical version of it. So um, for example, and this one's pretty obvious, I know, but this is one that I love and probably what I'm going to try to come up with something for Musical Monday for. Um, Phantom of the Opera is a movie. Maybe you love the movie Phantom of the Opera. I love the movie Phantom of the Opera, um, but it's also a musical. So, you know, like you don't even have to be into musicals to have a movie that you really love that is also a musical. There's, I know that that one's not a great example because it seems pretty obvious that that one is also a musical, but there are a lot of them that you'd be surprised they're actually musicals. Um, or if you are actually like a musical aficionado, then this will be like right up your alley. Um, and, you know, you can make things that go along with whatever musical. Um, Tuesday is going to be Tea Party Tuesday, which is going to be Alice in Wonderland themed. Totally here for it. Um, so you can make anything that's like Alice in Wonderland themed, um, anything that would be like worthy of the Mad Hatter, basically. Um, so... You could make a teacup, you could make a, like an unbirthday cake, um, you could make, honestly, I would think anything like really whimsical and kind of wacky would be fun for that. Um, and she said if you take a picture um, of your make, then have a teacup or a mug in the photo. So, you know, kind of pulling it into that theme. Um, and yeah, dressing up for, uh, for an Alice in Wonderland theme day. That could be really fun. I don't know if I have anything, but I think I could probably come up with something. <laughs> um, Wednesday is Whimsical Wednesday. And uh, Wednesday and Thursday were two days that were themed for other podcasters um, that have birthdays. They got to pick the theme for those days. Um, if you want to know more about uh, those podcasters and about all of this, make sure you head over to her video. I'm just uh, basically giving her a quick 
shout out for her uh, spirit week. But Whimsical Wednesday is going to be wacky penguin um, kind of themed. So the podcaster that has their birthday that day loves penguins. And so uh, she wanted to do like a wacky penguin theme. And uh, so you could make a penguin, any theme that you want. You could dress up to match your penguins like outfit maybe. Or you could do black and white dressing up. Um, whatever you want to do. And then Thursday is Think Pink Thursday, um, and that one is uh, for Teresa at Critters Crochet. I actually do know that channel. I have not checked out the channel for Whimsical Wednesday, and I cannot actually remember what the name of that channel is right now, which is why I'm saying go over and watch her video with all the details. Um, but Think Pink Thursday is just pink. It's literally just about being pink, wearing pink, everything pink, make something pink. Um, and her thing was, example was like, maybe you want to use every single pink yarn in your stash. Like that would be pretty crazy. Um, so that's like a really easy one to, uh, adhere to. Uh, Friday is Flashback Friday. This one is like a childhood nostalgia themed uh, one. I am excited for that. There are so many different ways I could go with it. I am going to be... Uh, I'm excited for that. I don't know which way I'm going to go for that yet, but I'm going to go all the ways and go massively overboard. 90s, everything 90s. Okay. Um, and then Cinematic Saturday is the last day of the Spirit Week. And basically that is something inspired by a movie. So it could be your favorite movie, but she's like, I'm not going to make you pick a favorite movie because let's, let's be honest, it is really hard to pick favorites for stuff like that. Um, but you could think of like one of your favorite movies or one of your favorite scenes uh, from a movie and you could make something inspired by that. So those are the um, themes uh, for the day different days of the Spirit Week. I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to that because that is coming up here towards the end of the month, the last uh, week of the month. And it would be so cool if we got some uh, people participating. Uh, like I said, I am going to be participating. I love Spirit Week, so I'm really excited for it. And I think uh, this one is really fun and original and like different themes that I've never seen before in a Spirit Week. Um, but if any of you guys are interested in participating, participating, uh, head over and check out her video and you should definitely join in. Um, but yeah, so I hope that you guys are having a fantastic Monday. I will see you tomorrow for our first Toadstool Tuesday. I'm super excited. I've already got, uh, my, my makes, uh, for tomorrow sitting next to me. Uh, I, I'm not going to show them to you yet because I'm going to show them to you tomorrow though. Uh, otherwise I would take the whole thunder out of Toadstool Tuesday. But uh, I hope you guys have a great Monday. I hope that you uh, had a fun weekend. And I hope that I will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, guys.